I'm going to do is open up a new document in Illustrator. So I'm going to create a 1080 by 1080 document because that's the size of the template in Photoshop which just helps to keep the sizing consistent. So I'm going to create that and then drag my window across. Alright, so I've got this artboard um, and what I'm going to do is paste in my artwork center it um, and this is pretty much more or less the final product for the GIF in terms of um, what we're going to be building up to so say the final frame um, and now I'm going to add a um, blank box so I'm just adding a rectangle um, to the artwork 1080 by 1080 so the size of the artboard and I'm going to give it no fill, no border, and I'm just going to use my align tools to align it exactly to the artboard. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to copy and paste our artwork into Photoshop, um, or we could also uh, export and then um, place your artwork into Photoshop. And it means that you're not trying to resize and keep those sizes consistent. No matter what, you've got a bounding box around the artwork that is always going to be 1080 by 1080. So all you have to do is press um, enter to place it in Photoshop and it's going to be the exact size you want. So now what I'm going to do, I already know I'm going to have five frames in my animation and I'll select the five frame animation template. So I will um, create five artboards uh, five blank artboards um, so that we can work backwards from the final final frame, final state of the GIF um, and we've got that bounding box on each one. So I'm going to uh, use Shift and O to get into my artboard tool in Illustrator and I'm just going to drag this across and then I'll delete this um, artwork from here but leave the bounding box there so I've just got an artboard with that box there and I will do that um, another three times to get to my five frames okay so I've got the final uh, state more or less of my gif um, and what I want to do is have the sprinkles um, kind of build onto the donut and then have the letters change colour and move up and down a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is grab this artwork here uh, without the bounding box because that's already on each one. Uh, use Control c on a PC. I think it's Command-C on a Mac. And then I'm going to use the shortcut shift Control v with this artboard selected to paste in place and it's really really important that you paste it in exactly the same spot on the next artboard so that shortcut is shift control v on a pc shift command v on a mac uh, and so now what we can do is go in and um, start changing up the artwork a little bit so i want to um, remove the white sprinkles so we've got um, just the three sprinkles so you can see from this frame to the next frame we're going to have the white sprinkles appear and I might also change up the color of the letters all right and I think I'm gonna have the letters move around a little bit too so um, we might kind of start here and go like up All right, and what I might do is just copy that across so that I'm not starting from um, the straight position again so I can tell what I need to change. So I'll just update these colors. Okay, so I've updated the colors. Now I want to move these um, letters just so they look like they're moving around in each frame. Okay, so we've moved the letters, we've removed some sprinkles, we're going to do the same thing again. Copy the artwork, make sure we don't have the bounding box selected. Copy, Control C or Command C, and then Shift Control V or Shift Command V on a Mac. Uh, we're going to remove the yellow sprinkles this time. 
Okay, and then we'll move the letters around again. Okay, I've made all the changes, so I've um, got the frame by frame of the sprinkles appearing, the letters changing colour, and the letters moving up and down a little bit. So the next step is to open up the uh, frame template file from the downloads folder and uh, start pasting the artwork into the smart objects. Okay, I'm in the GIF machine downloaded uh, template. I'm going to go into the GIF templates and then I'm going to go into the frame animation folder just below here. Okay, I'm going to open uh, this file uh, which has got frames-5 so that I know that it's got five uh, frames in the animation. So open that Photoshop file and you can see here I've got the frames from uh, 5 down to 1 and these are smart objects so to edit these so we can paste our artwork we're going to double click on the thumbnail image in the corner there so we'll start with um, frame 5 uh, we'll go to our illustrator file and I'm going to select uh, my fifth frame including the bounding box so I'm just going to copy that over but you can export it and then place it into the Photoshop document if you want to so I'm back in Photoshop. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just delete this text layout. You can edit the text in here if you want to. You can completely build out your um, GIF in Photoshop if you want to. Uh, I just like working in Illustrator. So I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to go Control V and paste as pixels. And you can see here that I've got the uh, bounding box which fits to the artboard and that means that I can just hit enter and I don't have to resize it and I don't have to worry about um, things being the incorrect size between frames. So I'm going to delete that ellipse layer and then I'm going to go control S or you can go file save and then close this smart object. You can see here that that thumbnail uh, for the fifth frame at the top has updated to the artwork. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the frames using the corresponding Illustrator artboards. Okay, uh, we have uh, updated all of our smart objects and now we're ready to preview the GIF. So um, if you're if you hit the space bar and nothing happens, it is in this instance, I'm not sure why Photoshop decides it does or it doesn't do it, but sometimes if you hit the space bar, um, nothing will happen. So hit the space bar, nothing happens. Go up to window, timeline, and this timeline will pop up here. You don't have to touch anything in there, but it will let you preview the GIF um, if you're having any troubles with it. So just hit spacebar. And you can see uh, we've made our five frame GIF. So you can also create this using the frame animation timeline in Photoshop if you know how to animate with that. Um, but the reason I've set it up like this in the template is because you don't have to toggle on and off um, the layers, you don't have to mess about with any of the timing or anything um, and you just paste in your artwork after you've created your frames and then you can export. So we'll just hit spacebar to stop that animation now I'm going to go file, export, export for web I'm going to select 128 dithered and under mat, I'm going to select none. And the reason I'm selecting none is so that it doesn't get that white outline that GIFs sometimes have around them. Okay, and we're just going to uh, save it. 
Okay, we've saved that. And I would probably put it in a different folder, but just for the sake of time, I'm saving it here. So on a PC, all you need to do is double click the image, it will open. And you can watch it play through. If you're on a Mac, open with and then Chrome and you can preview it in the browser. And it does come up with a white background, but if you upload this to um, Giphy or Canva or your website, it won't have a white background. That's just the way it previews in Chrome. Okay, that's our GIF. Um, there's heaps of potential with the frame animations. It's exactly like creating a timeline frame animation, but without all the hassle of uh, toggling on and off the layers and all those types of things. Uh, and you don't have to have any animation skills whatsoever. You just have to think uh, from your final frame and work backwards from there. So lots of fun, lots of things you could do. It could be rocking, it could be moving up and down. You could have little stars popping in, popping out. Um, the way that it's set up means that you don't have to mess around with the timing or turning on and off layers in the frame animation timeline in Photoshop. You don't have to know anything about that. You just place your uh, frame by frame in each smart object and you're ready to go once you save it out for web, you can put it on your website, you can put it in your email signatures, all sorts of stuff. So it's just a really uh, fun and versatile way to get some movement uh, into your design work. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next time. <laughs>